Across the internet, strange and obscure content's out there that just might send a chill down your spine, or at the very least, leave you feeling at least slightly unnerved. With that being said, I'd like to welcome you all back to disturbing things from around the internet. This is my series where I consolidate bite-sized creepy discoveries that I've recently stumbled upon online. Reminder that this is part 4, so if you're new to the series, be sure to go check out volumes 1 through 3 on my channel. It's time, once more, to dive into 5 more hand-picked and disturbing things from the internet. Bill Mead is the name of a YouTuber that runs a channel primarily focusing on the topic of religion. Bill started his channel back in 2014, and over the course of just 4 short months, he would upload 71 videos, amassing 16 whole subscribers to his content. He seemed to be very passionate about the topics that he preached about, and appeared to be open to discussion about Jesus and Christianity. Over the course of the channel's existence, Bill would make it evident that he was dealing with other complications. It appeared that he contracted a severe form of mouth cancer, and over the course of the four short months that he was on YouTube, were able to see the progression of his condition as it became worse and worse and worse. His very last video was uploaded on October 21st, 2014, and it was titled, in all caps, 10 Hour Surgery Tomorrow. Strangely, in this and the upload with the duplicate title, I was unable to extract any type of audio, almost as if it was completely muted by accident. In the description, Bill asks us, in jumbled text, to pray for him and the doctors as he undergoes this operation. And that was it. After seeing this, I naturally expected the worst. Seeing his condition progress so rapidly, followed by a video on the topic of a future surgery before going completely blank, left me with an endless curiosity as to what happened to Bill. I went back to his YouTube channel and tracked down his Google Plus page. With that, I was able to discover that he lived in California and had a wife named Doris. After doing what seemed like endless digging, I just wasn't able to find anything on a William or Bill Mead that would be related to a Doris. So I acquired the help of some friends, and one of them, specifically Alex Bale, was able to track his record down. Bill would have been 90 this year, and unfortunately passed away less than a month after his surgery. His legacy lives on though, and with this, we're left with a very humbling example of how quickly a condition can progress on the human body. This entry comes from a user on Facebook by the name of Rico Malik. In his post, he claims that he doesn't normally post on Facebook, but this is a true action and awareness post. In his words, This is very hard to watch. It hit very close to home as I have been in this situation before. This was my 19 year old niece coming home late last night in Converse, Texas to some home invaders in her bushes. Now just pay attention to the recklessness our society has come to. Get this to the media. These guys were out to murder anything moving last night, and they have to be dealt with. This is to be treated as if they murdered everyone in that car. With this, he's linked a video. In it, we're able to see a man as he's obviously hiding outside of a house, behind a tree. Apparently, the people in the car pulled up to their mom's house, who was asleep inside. After calling the cops from within the car, things begin to take a very dark turn. Do you want to tell your mom? No, wait. Wait till the cops get here. They're just waiting. I locked the doors. I was like, yeah. Because if they, Hello? that doesn't mean they're alone. Oh, Curtis, no. Right no, Curtis. There's another one. Lock the door. Hi, I'm in Converse at. Eight. There's somebody sitting at the side of my house. Looks like they're trying to get in. They're trying to run. Uh-uh. I'm reversing. Oh, they have a gun. 8310 J. I gotta get out of here. 
Thankfully, they all made it out alive. In this situation, they were absolutely lucky that they weren't harmed because this so very easily could have turned out far worse than it did. After first seeing this, I spent a lot of time contemplating at what I would do if I were in this situation. There's just no way around how it would have turned out. Grab a gun, shoot him back. There's two of them and they have a direct line of sight to you in the car. Floor it and ram into the tree? Like I said, there's two of them. The other would have come out from behind the bushes, guns ablaze. Back out and speed off? I still feel like they would have been inclined to shoot just because they can. All around, there's just no good way through this situation, which is what makes it that much more miraculous that the driver and passengers were unharmed. While this is so, unfortunately, the two men involved are currently still at large. This entry comes from a user on Reddit by the name of Gloves Are Effed. The post is titled, Warning Men of Halifax, The Glove Man. He opens his post by claiming that he's seen threads in other subreddits about this guy and that he finally had an accidental encounter with him. He claims, quote, Last weekend I was on my way back from downtown, walking alone on Spring Garden Road and scouting for a cab, when a well-dressed guy in a black SUV pulls up beside me to ask if I'm looking for a cab. I said yes, he asked where I was going, and I told him. He said he was headed in the same direction, and that he offers rides around town on the weekends. Thinking this was some friendly guy running his own Uber service, I got in hoping for a cheap ride and handed him a $10 bill out of my pocket. Side note, I'm 6'3 and 200 pounds, so I didn't feel threatened. Stupid of me. He then goes on to explain that the guy was wearing a leather jacket and gloves, and as soon as they start driving, he talks about this glove business that he's running before handing him a business card. When they finally approach his street, the guy eagerly says that he wants the OP to try on some gloves. Despite it being weird, the OP submits to humor him and ends up trying them on. After doing so, Things begin to become strange when he realizes that they fit really tight and that the guy began breathing somewhat forcefully. After putting two and two together in his head, he tried to drum up the most non-confrontational way out of the situation. However, the man kept insisting that he stay and try on more of his sets, all while breathing in a very unnatural manner. After an antagonizing few minutes with him, he ends up quickly thanking the man for his time jumps out of the car and books it towards a nearby house's yard in hopes of preventing the revelation of his own address to the man. He claims that the guy idled outside for a solid five minutes before driving off and closes his post by warning men of Halifax about this guy, supposedly nicknamed MJ, that offers to pick up young men, forcing them into trying on his gloves in order for him to become aroused. The post was then verified by the moderators and other users had jumped in claiming that they had heard or had encountered the man themselves. One of the other posts that the OP references even has the glove man's business card in order of proof. The entire situation is chilling and hopefully makes you think before you jump straight into a car with a random stranger that might have intentions that don't exactly align with your own.
This entry comes from a Facebook post made by a user named Hank Squires. Back in June of last year, he made a post showcasing a strange phenomenon that he had captured on his baby monitor. His post reads this. I'm very much a skeptic, and I'm going to try to explain this one. Last night, Cora woke up and started playing with a stuffed animal. Hannah thought it was cute, so she recorded it from the baby monitor. When she showed it to me, I told her that it was way too cold in her room, 66 degrees when we keep the house at 70. Then, the freaking teddy bear behind her moved. W watch the video. The video that he uploaded with that showed this. The video garnered tons of Facebook attention, and people threw in theories that the entire thing could be faked for attention, with many reasons given. One notable one is when the head actually moves. It seems that, at the top left, an arm is seen moving it. However, I'd personally like to counter this by saying that there simply would be no room for anyone or anything to squeeze their arm into that tight space. Unless there was some sort of modification done to it, nobody would have been able to fit back there. Another theory people have thrown up is that it's a battery-operated bear. While Hank claims that this is not the case, it could very well be true. The only real update we have is from June. Hank reshared the post onto his own page with the caption, one year ago. This, of course, renewed interest in the video, and down in the comments, there's one from a Dana Squires who claims that they're set on believing that the child had moved, thus causing the bear to move as well. While this seems like a very solid answer to the situation, we have to remember that it's always, always up for interpretation. Last year, a post was made on the X board of 4chan claiming that there was a user on Facebook that discovered a strange profile by the name of Ori Chef. Apparently, Ori had commented on a news article, clamoring on about nonsense. After they attempted to translate it, things got… strange. The 4chan user went forth to say this. So I was just on Facebook like a normie that I am, and I came across a comment in a post that's a bit unnerving. It's from a posted article from a page that has a few comments, so I saw it. The comment was obviously not entirely in English, but she explains how she wants to be cremated before her husband, or some type of thing, and she kept talking about her friend Susie or something. So I got weirded out by this and tried to click on the Facebook account to know what the fuck is up with this lady. This is where it gets weirder. This was her profile. I immediately saw that she had no posts or even uploads of pictures, so I assumed that she was a dummy account by some dude who's doing god knows what. Then I saw her friends list. Now I just realized after skimming through all these accounts that every bio that she has adds something weird or cryptic, like cheese bread from an almond milkshake and pita bread from a seasoned beef kind of shit like that. It seems to be so many that I can't imagine the reason why some person would do some kind of shit like this and what purpose. So it seems that after visiting her profile, they found that every single one of Ori's friends was simply another version of her profile picture with photoshopped facial features and hair. Posts on their profiles get even stranger than this. There are multiple images depicting animal gore with captions that hint at the murder of her own children. Going by her profile, there are no photos or any evidence therein of Ori actually having any children, however it's disturbing to see. 
After discovering all this, a user then reached out to Ori, asking her about her many accounts and why she's doing this, and she responded in her typical style, claiming that, Yeah, all of them. I was the one who created by, unfortunately, because of my negligence and the stupidity, I forgot that I was renting the computer and forgot to change the password as soon as possible. The 4chan user responded, Oh? Okay, I understand. I like the pictures that you post, like the one you have as your profile picture. Did you make them? To which Ori responds saying, Really? Thank you, it's in the Play Store app. If it's in your CP, you know edit the pic. He then asks her how many accounts she uses, to which she responds saying upwards of 15 to 24. When asked why, she made the excuse that she uses them for requests in Facebook games. While Ori claims this, I'm going to go forth and say that I'm absolutely not buying this. Why in the world would there be so many accounts that are made of yourself just for game requests? Also, why in the world would she post gruesome images and caption them about the demise of her own children? Something just doesn't add up. Theories have been thrown out that Ori is either a bot, a simple troll account, an account linked to the government, or actually a genuine person that, for some odd reason, found the need to create 20 plus accounts of herself. Even if this latter theory were true, why would she post such sinister things about her children alongside these screwed up images? It just doesn't add up to me. There's definitely something going on here. <sighs> It almost reminds me of the Stephanie Stevens case, but weirder. As we said before, disturbing and obscure content can exist all over the internet, and like we just witnessed, this definitely holds true. I hope you all enjoyed this entry into the series. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Which one freaked you out the most? Lastly, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I love you all, and good night.